Hello, good morning. Actually, it's just the part of our uh, project which was uh, completed by my PhD uh, student who did defend uh, uh, um, perfectly her PhD thesis last uh, fall, uh, and uh, Elżbieta did focus on biomedical but as well psychosocial needs of patients with cardiovascular diseases staying at home care. It's really a problem uh, in Poland where you have uh, at least uh, three, four thousand of patients and just one district nurse who is responsible for uh, the uh, plan of care for such population. Of course, not each patient is staying at home, but we know that the number of such patients is still growing and it will be larger in the close future. So there is a need to develop really a model uh, for assessing the effectiveness of home care in patients with uh, chronic cardiovascular diseases, which would take as well the needs of informal caregivers into account. And it doesn't matter about we, which part of the world we are just now speaking. Uh, the majority of uh, caregivers will be just family members or someone who is just employed by family member. So everything did start from the question, how would you assess the effectiveness of home care? And there was no as such model or such agreement in our healthcare system just now. So we did decide that what is important, taking into account every day base which uh, uh, we could uh, reach is the highest uh, possible quality of life, highest possible level of health behaviors, and highest possible needs met. So we did involve 193 patients staying at home with at least one chronic cardiovascular disease and as well 161 informal caregivers of these patients. And our study tools included uh, the Camberwell modified short assessment and in this way we were able to uh, assess the level of unmet or met needs, health uh, behavior inventory questionnaire to assess the level of health behaviors of our patients, but as well um, informal caregivers, quality of life uh, breath questionnaire, uh, which was validated in chronically ill population, as well in Polish population, had questionnaire and out of structured interview questionnaire. So, speaking about our patients with, uh, as you uh, do remember already, chronic cardiovascular diseases, majority of them were women with median uh, age 74, uh, usually from uh, cities, but as well 40% of them, of course, were from villages, and with duration of disease with median 10. Speaking about caregivers, majority of them were as well women with median age 55 uh, with uh, place of residence uh, from majority of them were from cities and with duration of disease with median four because as well our caregivers were chronically sick. So how we did really evaluate the effectiveness of care we uh, did separate of group with the quality of life and uh, uh, health, behavior, health behaviors and needs met above median and below median. And where uh, and when we did compare the group with uh, potentially low and high level of care efficiency, we found that a uh, uh, majority of uh, patients in group with low uh, effectiveness of healthcare 
uh, was older than group with a higher level of efficiency. Speaking about education, we found uh, mostly patients with primary education and with professional education in group of low effectiveness and speaking about the good financial situation, majority of patients with high effectiveness of healthcare uh, was in this group and majority of patients with low effectiveness of healthcare received the benefits from a social assistance center. When we did focus on good physical well-being and good mental well-being, majority of patients were in high effectiveness of health group and majority of patients with multimorbidity was in group of low effectiveness of healthcare. Uh, patients with permanently prescribed medications located in group with high effectiveness of healthcare. Then we did compare caregivers of patients in group of patients with high effectiveness of healthcare uh, at home and low effectiveness of uh, um, healthcare. What we found was that satisfaction with the level of quality of life in group of caregivers was higher uh, in group of caregivers which did care for patients with low effectiveness of healthcare. But when we did focus on quality of life of caregivers, we found that in all domains, physical domain, psychological domain, social relationships domain, and environmental domain, we found a higher level of quality of life in caregivers, and this probably did affect uh, or was affected by the effectiveness of uh, home healthcare in group of patients. As well, we found uh, differences between the caregivers of patients with low and high level of care efficiency when we did compare health behaviors in both groups and uh, health behaviors were much higher in group of patients uh, and caregivers with high effectiveness of healthcare. And as well, level of needs met was higher in caregivers of patients with higher effectiveness of healthcare. The same we found when we did assess, assess the fulfillment of expectations uh, towards the mm, family uh, physicians uh, in case of courtesy and understanding. It was much higher level in a group uh, of patients um, and caregivers with higher effectiveness of healthcare. So what we did uh, conclude was that there is really a need to improve the efficiency of home care, especially in patients above 77 years of age, but especially when you have the patient with a lower education, bad financial situation and recipients from social assistance centers as well as with poor self-esteem because this is what we already did assess in physical and mental well-being. But as well, we cannot divide patients from their caregivers. They are bound and uh, at, in each case, it's only the matter of time when you will have to develop the plan for the patients, but as well their caregivers in the same time. And what is going in your patients will affect caregiver and the uh, well-being of caregiver will affect the well-being of patients. So it's as well necessary to analyze the needs and expectations of informal caregivers in the somatic, mental, social and 
environmental domains of quality of life and especially in the case of coexistence of unmarried status, higher level of satisfaction with quality of life and lower expectations from the family are uh, physicians in terms of courtesy and understanding. Thank you very much for your attention. Mm -hmm. Um, Donata, that was very, very interesting. Donata also has to get a train after the session, but you have actually been very... No, no, I can't are you okay? Because you've been very efficient with time, so you, do you want to take questions now or, or, or hold back to afterwards? Uh, it's echo. I cannot hear. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if you want... Um, because you've been so efficient with your time, would you want to take some uh -huh. questions now? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, okay. So, because Donata has been very efficient with her time, we can take questions just now and allow her to get her train as well. Um, I found that fascinating. And obviously, there's there are clear information there about the target groups and the key areas, but also the additional information that, or the additional studying you need to do. Uh, does, does any of the audience have a question about Donata's um, presentation, either from their own experience or from what they've re heard from this morning. Um, does the um, outcomes surprise any of the audience in terms of the low education, the low finance, um, a, the low take up in welfare benefits? Is it? Uh, yeah? We'll, we'll bring down the microphone for you, it'd be easier. Were, were these outcomes for um, the population just that was receiving home care, not an intervention model? What is outcome of? The, all the, the different outcomes that you discussed, were they, was there an intervention that was de developed? In no, the it was observational was it just, study. Just? We, yeah, we, because uh, it's a bit different situation when we, when you are speaking about healthcare, where you have any model of care. But it's a completely different situation when you are speaking about healthcare, when you are starting from the point zero and you are looking for variables which will affect the outcome of the care. So we are speaking about this case. And now we can think about intervention when we see what really will affect this effectiveness of care and what really doesn't matter in our population. Uh, of course, it is what we were able to assess, so it's like with each model of care, you cannot assess everything what could influence. You can assess what could be used in future interventions and in future model of care. Uh, what I'm really meaning is I cannot uh, assess everything what will affect from my, uh, my family physician point of view because the model will be shaped and organized by district nurse. So she really, or usually it's she, should decide how it should uh, uh, be organized and which variables which could be uh, and should be included in this model of care. Sure, so that makes more sense. Okay. That's super, thank like you. A pilot yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. I think I would have one observation about the age 77 and over, and I probably would like to see a trend analysis or the, or the research continue to see if there'd be a dropping of that age relative to people's incomes changing, pensions, um, um, as the trends in ec economics change as well over the next 10 to 12 years. So, uh, yeah, in the problem is generally uh, very complex because we do not have any structure for uh, caregivers of patients in Poland. So if anyone will decide to become a caregiver of the uh, patient, let's say family member, uh, they have to really decide to finish their professional work, what means 
it will uh, at uh, uh, any point of the timeline affect uh, them from economical um, point of view, but as well well-being point of yeah. view. You know, work is not only about earning money. But uh, uh, as well, we see that our caregivers are, uh, are getting older and older, and there's no sufficient help mm -hmm. from the social care side uh, of Poland. And on the top of this, you have uh, in our system completely divided healthcare system from social care. So. Um, it's not easy even to assess and think about any model of care for this group of patients. So we see our study as, you know, a small piece of the puzzle yeah. which we did try to collect just now in our healthcare system and circumstances. Well, um, I take it there are no other questions, just very quickly. Um, I would like to thank Donata, that was thank excellent, you. super, thank, thank you. you very much.